So let's start with talking and understanding the breath. First of all, breath is life. Now, like water is air. This is the first thing we do when we are born. And small children, animals, cats, dogs, other animals, they all breathe perfectly well. They don't need to learn it. We have it. So if, if we should do anything, it's unlearn or relearn our habits that some of them maybe interfere with a good breath. So let's start looking at it. The main thing to observe before we take the breath is our posture. So we start from the bottom hmm, and we think about our feet. The first thing would be both feet fully on the ground, fully, I mean front and back, grounded, like you have a feel, a good feel of the ground, and you get back some feeling from the ground through gravity. This is, this is your main connection to Mother Earth, if you will. Then we go a bit up and we observe our knees. Important to, to observe about the knees that they are unlocked. They should not be bent too much, just unlocked. So the muscles above are relaxed and then the the belt area is born free so that, that the air, the breath can go deeper in the body. We will get to it later. Okay, then the hips. Just observe that the hips are on top of the feet, not in front and not in the back. So we are straight and we go on to the level of the shoulders and they are also parallel above the feet, above the hips not in front, not it back, so we are straight. And the last thing is our head that should float. Look to the sky, if you will. So the, the head is going to the sky, the feet are going to the ground, and we are straight and relaxed, kind of flexible and straight. If you know it already, if you feel well with your body, fantastic. If you want to get into it a little bit deeper, I would recommend a few methods. The first of them would be Alexander technique. I don't know if you heard about it. It's a very good technique. I myself did it over 20 years ago for a few years. Alexander technique teaches us how to handle our body in our daily movements like walking, standing, sitting, just handling or managing the body in the right way. It also deals with habits. We, we will talk about habits a bit later. So this is one method. Another very good method that would deal with body and mind, if you will, or even body, breath and mind, would be Qigong, which I, at the present moment, I'm doing every day. Qigong, is dealing with, as I said, with the body, mind, and breath. So it's a very good combination to bring more awareness to our body. Because in, in our time, many, many people tend to be in the head and not so much in the body because we are living in such a busy world and so many impulses to the mind and sometimes we forget about our body. So Qigong, I would recommend very much. If you are very serious about getting more awareness, then I would recommend meditation. Meditation is basically breathing and observing the mind, which is, it's a, it's a huge topic. We cannot go into it, but I, I highly recommend it if you have the will and you have the time. And I would recommend, maybe we will get the title and the, and the link later on, of a fantastic book that only talks about breathing. This is a, the breathing book of uh, a lady called Donna Fahi. We will write it down for you. So if you want to get deeper in the body, deeper in breath, deeper in awareness, you should go there. If you feel uh, fine with your body, great. We can just then 
move on. So let's do an exercise, the first of two. It's a basic one, but an important one, to get the right feeling of the place of the breath and the depth of it. So sit on a chair, try to stay straight, relaxed but straight. Have a good sense of the chair supporting you, so you get a feel where the breathing starts. And what we are going to concentrate on is basically just exhaling, stopping, and then relaxing. I'll show you. Relax. And then you see that the inhale happens by itself. I do it again. Okay, so when the relaxation happens, the inhale happens by itself, going deep in the body. Okay, when that works, we can start standing up and doing the same thing. So, the same thing that we did sitting down, we will try now standing up, because most of the time we play standing up. So, just the same feeling that you had by sitting, Try to have this little feel of sitting while standing. I remind you, the knees a bit unlocked. And just try to get the air going to the same place, deep in the body. Okay, very good. Now, a little uh, extra remark, because I said that babies, cats, dogs, they all breathe very well, but when we breathe naturally, when we don't think about it, when we sleep or whenever, we, we normally breathe through the nose. And when we play the flute, we normally breathe through the mouth. There would be some instances maybe that we might use the nose, but mainly the breath is through the mouth. And for some people, this makes a little complication. So let's talk just a little bit about the mouth area in concern to the breath. First of all, is the jaw. We should relax the jaw in order to let the breath in. I will show you again. This relaxation is, if you go by the bus or by the train and you fall asleep, this is exactly what happens. The jaw falls down. Okay, the jaw is very important for the breath. Also for the sound later, but first of all, the inhale, okay? Second point to mention is the tongue. The tongue should be after the jaw went down. The tongue should fall on top of the jaw. Yeah, it's hard to see, but you can imagine it, you can try it. And if I breathe and you look at me, you don't see the tongue. If you see the tongue and you hear that the sound, it's not a good breath. When I release the tongue, the sound of the breath is totally different. And also, if you observe, the air goes much deeper in the body. If I lift my tongue and take a breath, it comes much higher in the body, okay? So, jaw, one. And two is the tongue. And third is the throat. So this is a poor breath, but this, is better, so kind of a ho sound, H-O going inside, or warm air going inside, and then it go, goes much, much deeper, okay? So these are the things to observe. Of course, when we hold the flute to play, or when we play, I'm not playing yet, but because of the posture and the embouchure, we tend to do something here that when we want to breathe, Sometimes it interferes, but if you get the feeling of the free flute on the lips or on the jaw, you see, I, I talk to you now with the flute, and whenever I want, I just open my mouth to breathe and back. So try to follow every step and do it slowly to get the right habits.